So I finally unlocked the Jerok Alliance carrier the other day, and I've been trying to figure out what kind of build I want to put on it. It's pretty science heavy, so EPG kind of makes sense for it, even though it doesn't have a secondary deflector, but Augie already did that on his video, so I didn't see the need to do that again. In the end, I ended up with something a little weird. Well, not that weird, but weird for a carrier. If you've been keeping an eye on my community post lately, you might have seen a poll where I was asking if I should use a Beam Overload build or a Scatter Volley build on an upcoming build video. Well, this was the one I was talking about. Now, the Jurok Carrier really isn't the best platform for either of those builds, largely because, well, it's a full science carrier. So its seating and console layout are more science focused than anything else, and it has the fewest amount of weapon slots than any other kind of ship, only having six. But I feel like that hasn't stopped a lot of players from running builds like this. So I figured I would give it a try and see how well it performed. Like I said, the decision was between a Cannon Scatter Volley build and a Beam Overload build. When I recorded the ISC for this video, Scatter Volley was in the lead. But then after I went to bed, Beam Overload pulled into the lead. And now as I'm recording this, the vote is at a 50-50 tie, which is not helpful for decision making. But since Scatter Volley was in the lead when I did the ISC recording, that's the build I went with for this. And I'm actually glad that's the one I went with for this ship. Because since this is a free ship, I wanted to make this build much more budget focused than I normally would. Because Cannon Scatter Volley is much more budget friendly than Beam Overload, since its extension trait, Withering Barrage, is much easier to get. Because according to Star Trek Online's canon, we know that the Alliance uses anti-proton weapons. I wanted to stick with that theme, so I am using Bowl anti-proton dual heavy cannons. Yes, I know Bowl weapons kind of breaks the budget theme a bit, even more so since I'm using the little by two piece as well, but I actually don't have any other anti-proton weapons besides these, and I really didn't feel like buying more. But if you're going to use Anti-Proton, don't feel like you need to go with Bottle Weapons. You can get away with using whatever ones you want. So, like I said, a pair of dual heavy cannons in the front, then the Dark Matter Quantum Torpedo from the Discovery Reputation, then my usual energy weapon setup, so the Proto Matter Deflector from the Fleet Colony for its buffs to crit chance and crit severity, the Competitive Reputation Engine for the speed buffs, a Plasma Integrated Warp Core from the Fleet Spire, and the Shield from the Discovery Reputation. In the back are some Bowel Anti-Proton Turrets. Again, you can use whatever type of Anti-Proton you want. I am also using the Bowel Omni Beam for the sake of the set bonus, however if you're not using this set you can use another turret instead. In the devices, again, usual setup, energy amplifiers for the bonus damage to my energy weapons, deuterium surplus for the speed buff, reactive armor catalyst in case I need to heal, all three of these are crafted from the R&D system by the way, Kobayashi Maru transponder for the random buffs, this is an old event reward, so if you don't have it you're probably not going to be able to get it anytime soon. Honestly you could replace this with pretty much anything, because with 5 device slots we're pretty spoiled for choice and the red matter capacitor for the bust of my power levels, which can be found in the Phoenix store. Now for the consoles, I really try to stay true to the budget theme, well, with one exception. First, as usual, is Lorca's custom fire control, which is here for its buff to crit chance, weapons power setting, and shield penetration. This is also here because of its two-piece bonus with the dark matter torpedo, which offers a stacking buff to crit severity. This console can also be found in the Discovery Reputation. Next is a console you guys have seen on this channel many times before, Enhanced Plasma Manifold off the Tier 1 Oberth. This will buff all my non-weapons power subsystems, and when I get to the starship traits, I will tell you why that is helpful. Though if you've been here before, you probably already know. Polymorphic Probe Array is here to buff my anti-proton damage, and also gives a buff to control expertise. Because of how science-heavy this ship is, that's actually kind of helpful. Its click can summon a few probes that can disable enemy subsystems, and will deal a small amount of anti-proton damage. This console does come from the lockboxes, but it's not attached to a starship, so you can get it on the exchange pretty cheap. Next is the Assimilated Module from the Omega Task Force Reputation. This is here to buff my crit chance, my crit severity, and my weapons power subsystem. This is also giving me some more control expertise, which, like I said, kind of helpful on this ship. Next is the Bao Link Sentry Coordination Matrix. This is the other piece from the Lobi store. It buffs my anti-proton damage, gives me a little bit more hull capacity, can remove an incoming control effect from my ship, and of course has the two-piece bonus with the Omni Beam to buff the refractions of my Bao weapons. I know not everyone wants to spend the money for Lobi, so I will offer suggestions for substitutions before I move on to the next part of the video. Because I wanted this build to be more budget focused, I'm not using the DPRM or the Domino. Instead, I'm using the M6 computer off the Tier 3 Temporal Escort. It doesn't have a passive buff, but its click ability does give a 15% bonus damage buff, and a 20% firing cycle haste buff for 15 seconds. These next three are actually all from the Alliance ships. Sensor Suppression Barrage comes off of this ship, the Jerok. It gives a passive buff to crit chance and auxiliary power. Its click gives a 20% crit chance buff to you and any allies within 20 kilometers for 5 seconds. It'll also reset the recharge time on any hangar bays. Additionally, your own hangar pets or any other summons you have will gain a 30% crit chance buff for 20 seconds and placate any foes within 10 kilometers. So with this, you're basically buffing you, your entire team, and buffing your own hangar pets even further. This is a very powerful console, especially on a ship with hangar bays. Next is Aligned Anti-Proton Shielding off of the Kittimer Alliance Battlecruiser, which was the ship from the 10th anniversary event. 
This gives a passive buff to anti-proton damage and shield capacity, and with its click ability active, incoming damage will buff the haste of my energy weapons and my shield capacity and regeneration. Activating this console again will also enable the Alliance Lance, which is just a lance attack of anti-proton damage. Now, with a properly set up ISC like you're going to see later in the video, this console isn't actually going to be very helpful, because in that situation, you would usually be running with someone running a tank build and a control build, so odds are you're not going to be the one getting shot at that much. However, this console would be pretty good if you're just running random TFOs, and even more so for solo content. Next is the last of the Alliance consoles, Alliance Tactics off of the Tamer Alliance Raider. This console gets passive buffs to anti-proton damage and your weapon amplification skill. That determines how much crit severity you do with your weapons. Its click will give a 25% buff to bonus all damage and weapon shield penetration for 5 seconds. It'll also fire off two anti-proton damage weapons, which will have 50% shield penetration. Activating this console a second time will trigger Alliance Tactics, which is just a buff to flight speed, turn rate, and control resistance. Now, because two of these are from past event ships, I know there's a possibility that some of you don't have these consoles. Like I said, I will be offering some other suggestions before the next section of the video. And the tactical consoles are just three anti-proton vulnerability locators from the Fleet Spire, all of which are buffing my anti-proton damage and my crit chance. And lastly, in the hangar bays, are two Alliance Fighter Squadrons, which come from this ship. Well, not these exact ones. These are the Elite versions which you can buy at your Fleet Star Base. But you need to own this ship in order to gain access to them. The ship will come with rare quality versions of the fighters, but I would recommend upgrading as soon as possible. Because the higher the version of the fighters, the more powerful version of Focused Assault they'll have. And that's what makes these fighters so special. Because Focused Assault will provide you and your whole team a nice amount of bonus damage buffs. Now, if you don't have access to any of these consoles, here are some other suggestions. Voth Phase Decoy gives a buff to anti-proton damage and hull capacity. When activated, the console cloaks you, but won't disable your weapons, and generates a phase duplicate that'll draw aggro. When the duplicate is destroyed, it'll deal a small amount of electrical damage and disable the engines of the ship that destroyed it. Crystal and Absorption Matrix also buffs your anti-proton damage, as well as your energy damage resistance. Activating this console will buff the energy damage resistance up to 500, and every 3 seconds you'll deal anti-proton damage to 3 random targets, so it's like a little pocket fire at will. Both of these consoles are available in the Phoenix Prize Store. Next is Temporal Anomaly Projector. This console buffs your physical damage, anti-proton damage, radiation damage, and your shield regeneration. This console's click ability fires off a Temporal Anomaly at your target, where it will linger for 10 seconds. Any enemies within the anomaly will receive some anti-proton damage over time, though this is actually exotic anti-proton damage, not normal weapons-based anti-proton damage, so it won't be buffed by your weapons consoles, it'll actually be buffed by your exotic particle generator skill. The anomaly will also disable enemy weapons. This console is available in the Infinity Lockboxes, but like Polymorphic Probe Array, is not attached to a starship, so you can get it on the exchange for pretty cheap. Next is Zero Point Energy Conduit from the Romulan Reputation, just because it has a decent crit chance buff, and the buff to your power systems is kinda nice. Now, with a ship this large, I'm sure plenty of you are going to want to use an RCS accelerator to buff your turn rate. That's fine if you want to, just make sure you use a Bellum RCS, because that'll also buff your crit chance. You can find these in the Dilithium store of the Discovery Reputation. For my specializations, I'm using, again, my usual energy weapon setup, so that's Intel Officer to gain access to space flanking, and Temporal Operative for Entropic Rider. For the personal traits, I tried to go a bit more budgety than I usually do. I did use a few more free traits than I normally do, and I didn't use Boimler Effect, which is definitely the most expensive, but more than half of these are still lockbox traits. Fortunately, lockbox traits aren't that expensive in comparison to other things on the exchange, so I feel it still fits the definition of a budget or mid-tier build. These first four are the free traits. Fleet Coordinator, which gives me a bonus damage buff for every member on the team. Innocuous for the buff to crit severity and the reduced threat generation. Operative for the small buff to crit chance and crit severity and Superior Cannon Training for the bonus damage to my cannon weapons. Technically, Cannon Training is the free version. The Superior version is unlocked at the K-13 Fleet Holding. The rest of these personal traits are from the lockboxes. Adaptive Offense, which is a crit chance buff that turns into a crit severity buff and then back. Context is for Kings for the bonus damage buff when I'm not being shot at, but turns into a damage resistance buff when I am. Inspiration Leader for the chance to buff most of my starship skills. Intel Agent Attaché to lower the cooldown of my captain's abilities. Fragment of AI tech to increase my energy weapon damage based on my control expertise, Terran targeting systems for the crit severity buff, and unconventional systems to help lower the cooldowns of my universal consoles. In the starship traits, first I have Emergency Weapon Cycle, which comes from the Arbiter Battlecruiser. This will increase my energy weapon's firing cycle haste, while lowering my weapons power cost for 30 seconds every time I use emergency power to weapons. Next is Improved Critical Systems, which actually comes from the Temporal Recruitment event. Every time I use an Emergency Power Bridge Officer ability, I gain a buff to both Crit Chance and Crit Severity for 15 seconds. And now for what I kind of consider a staple of this channel at this point, Onboard Dilithium Recrystallizer. 
Anytime I activate an Engineering Bridge Officer ability, I gain 10% bonus damage for every non-weapons power subsystem I have maxed out, so that's a potential for 30% bonus damage. This is why I'm using the Enhanced Plasma Manifold. It buffs the three subsystems I need to max out for the sake of this trait. This trait is available in the lockboxes, but isn't attached to a starship, so you can easily find it on the exchange. Next is Strike from Shadows off the Strand Pilot Escort. When dealing damage to an enemy that isn't targeting you, this will decrease your threat generation and give you a small buff to crit chance and bonus damage. Promise of Ferocity comes off of the Thosin Andorian Pilot Escort and will give a small stacking bonus damage buff every time I activate a tactical or pilot ability, though on this ship I only have tactical. And last is Withering Barrage, which comes off of a number of different ships, one of which is the Imchala Refit, which can be earned from the KDF Recruitment Event, which is still running now until March 9th. So if you haven't made a KDF character yet, go make one. What this trait does is extend the duration of Cannon Scatter Volley by 4 seconds, which will allow you to keep it active nearly 100% of the time. For the Space Reputation traits, first we have... Enhanced Targeting Systems for the Crit Severity buff, Tyler's Duality for the Crit Chance buff based off my hull capacity, Precision for another Crit Chance buff, Magnified Firepower for the bonus damage to my weapons, and Controlled Countermeasures for the bonus weapon damage against controlled targets. Now for the Bridge Officer seating. Heisenberg Amplifier 1 and Chronometric Inversion Field 1 to trigger unconventional systems, Scatter Volley 2 to buff my cannons, and because I can't fit Scatter Volley 3 on this build, Torpedo Spread 1 to buff my torpedo, Attack Pattern Beta for the debuff, Emergency Power to Engines for the speed buff, Ox to Bat because I'm not using Boimler Effect, Emergency Power to Weapons 3 to buff my energy weapons, and to trigger Emergency Weapon Cycle, Gem Sensors and Targeting Sensors are both here to trigger unconventional systems, Photonic Officer 2 because I'm using a half-bat build for my Bridge Officer cooldowns, Gravity Well 3 for some extra control on my enemies, and Tractor Beam for another unconventional systems trigger. For the Duty Officers, first I have a pair of Projectile Officers, one to buff my crit chance and one to buff my crit severity. I know very rare versions of these doffs are actually very expensive, but you can also get rare and uncommon versions of these guys for a better price. Next is Vincent Kish, a Space Warfare Specialist. He's actually out of the new lockboxes. With this guy, I have a 25% chance to upgrade my Scatter Volley 2 to Scatter Volley 3. This guy is pretty cheap right now because he's new, though I don't know if he'll stay cheap. Supply and demand is funny like that. But if this guy has gotten too expensive, just throw in another projectile officer that you can afford. And the other three are a trio of technicians for the sake of Ox to Bat. Now, I know a lot of you wanted to see Beam Overload on this build as well. Fortunately, modifying it for that really isn't that difficult. Just swap out Scatter Volley 2 for Beam Overload 3, trade Superior Cannon Training for Superior Beam Training, and trade Withering Barrage for Super Weapon Ingenuity. Now, let's go watch the ISC and then the parse.
310k. Honestly, I expected this thing to only do half that good. And I'll tell you why it did this well, it's because of those Alliance pets. I had two full squadrons of elite versions of those things, plus Augie had a third on his build, so with the way Focused Assault stacks now, that is a lot of bonus damage, which is allowing even this goofy carrier build to hold its own in ISE. And that ISE run was not the smoothest run I've ever had. With a smoother run, I could probably get a little bit more DPS out of this thing. So yeah, that is my alliance theme build on the Jerok Alliance Carrier. I'm trying to come up with something for an outro, but I can't think of anything to say. So instead, I'm just gonna do one of these. Hold on. <clears throat> one of these. There we go. Hi. Been a while. <laughs> do you remember my instructions? Like the video, subscribe to the channel, play Star Trek Online, or I will fuck you in the face like a bird!